Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior. And this is the continuing story of the Barbarian. Ida Stock, once lost. Uh, give me a quick microphone check, make sure all sounds are good, and then we will proceed with the story. See lots of familiar faces. Welcome, Grumpy Kitty, William, Tom. All right. So my voice is carrying all the way across the ocean. This is wonderful. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get started. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, right where we left off last time. So, yes, <clears throat> if you have not watched the previous episode, that was recorded last night. It is about an hour and a half long. It is all put together and rendered and was just published a little while ago. So, take that in as time allows. It's not a super long one. I had to cut things off early last night because of some things that were going on. But it turned out to be a great place to stop anyway, because some kind of miraculous things happened. Uh, from a game mechanics perspective, from a just sheer luck perspective, and from a role-playing perspective. And we're going to cover those things very, very quickly here. Now, as I indicated in yesterday's episode, I have introduced the Anision mod Winter Sun into the game. And to begin with, this character was focused on the worship of Shore, but as we know, he's got a complicated relationship with Shore. And ultimately, my goal was to have him kind of shift his allegiance away from Shore specifically into becoming more of a follower of the traditional ways of the ancient Nords or the old ways. And there is also a shrine to the old ways located here in Skyrim, provided by this wonderful mod. Now the problem is, second, uh, I'll keep that to myself. the locations of a lot of these shrines are available. You can find them on the website uh, on Nexus. But this one in particular and a handful of others were not available. I asked around in the Nexus forums to try to see if anyone had found it. I even asked 
an eye scion directly through his Patreon page. I am a supporter of his uh, Patreon campaign and have been for some time. And I didn't hear anything back, and so I thought, okay, we'll just let it go. We'll see what happens. We'll see if we run into it just by chance. And last night, within 90 minutes of getting started, I stumbled into it, and in probably the most miraculous way possible. Like, it, it, I think what is interesting about it is that Anai Scion is so kind of in touch, I think, with how his mods relate to lore and how role players use them, that he put that shrine in a very, very out-of-the-way lo out location, but a location that would make perfect sense to those who are engaged in play style having to do with this adherence to the old ways, that I literally stumbled right across it. It was in a wonderful spot, and that's when we knocked off last night. Now, in order to get to the shrine, Idastag, on his way through Labyrinthian, came into this barrow. How often have we just run past it? How often do we run past it? Especially with characters that aren't interested in the masks or the dragons. Well, he walked in here. He put on the wooden mask. The wooden mask transported him as if to another dimension into a different version of this very room that was locked off from the outside world and there was the shrine. I can safely say that none of my other characters, with the possible exception of Sagramore, might have bothered to even put that mask on. So that was a really wonderful piece of luck. And so, uh, you know, hats off to Anai Scion for an amazing mod and for really understanding roleplay and what role players are going to do with this stuff. Uh, and then for us, uh, we're talking about what are the things right now that are moving this character? Well, when he came to this land, he was on the run. He was on the run from the woodland man, from the, from the impending doom of the woodland man, trying to save the history of his people. Um, and once he got here, he was kind of floundering around a little bit trying to establish himself, trying to make some money, you know? Uh, and the traditional way that an Atmoran raider would make some money is to go on raids. Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of battle, but there was also some kind of floundering around. He was sort of consumed with fear and worry that he wasn't going to be able to save this knowledge, that he was going to get killed before being able to save this knowledge. And so he floundered around. He was not adhering to his meditations. He was questioning his belief in Shore. He was doing things that as a shaman or priest he wouldn't normally do. Drinking to excess, getting in fights, suffering defeats in the face of his hubris. You know? Um, and I think suddenly Never out of that disaster comes the knowledge that the dragons have returned, not only that, but that he can understand their language, that that language is in fact in his blood, and that he has some power associated with it. To him, that's a sign, a sign of some sort that he's on the right track. Now this, he finds the shrine to the old ways, but only after donning the wooden mask found in this abandoned barrow, right? That's some pretty momentous stuff from a roleplay perspective. So, its importance is not lost on me as a role player, and I think what that means for our character is that, at the moment anyway, for the time being, he is going to be more focused on his objectives than ever, um, and he's going to have a bit more of a no-nonsense or take-no-prisoners attitude with regard to his objectives, because he feels like he's on the right track. There's going to be a certain sense of urgency to the things he does. And there's going to be, uh, I think, he's more likely to be less tolerant of people and things that stand in the way of his objectives. So this is kind of our character personality check-in, if you will. Now, as you know, 
In the last episode, we also left Valfar up with the Greybeards. Valfar is learning from the Greybeards in a deal that Idastog struck with them. I'll retrieve the horn of Jurgen Windcaller in exchange for you taking my brother on as an apprentice and teaching him how to control his shouts. This worked into the story, I think, really well, and it was also kind of a clever way for us to get Valfar off our plate for a little bit for a little bit of time. Well, I shake things up a little bit. All right. I had since come up with a great method for ensuring that Valfar did not continually knock us down because of his shouts. But rather than doing that, I think we're going to take this role play solution. All right. All right. So at this point, what we've done is we have set up camp in this barrow. Um, Idestog has taken some time to do a little bit of reflection on the events that have taken place here. And the other thing that he's thinking about now is it's time to go back to Whiterun. It's time to, rather than floundering around here and trying to figure out where Ustengrav is, it's time to think a little bit more clearly about what the objectives are. It's time to go back to Whiterun. We're going to lighten our load. We're going to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And uh, we're, we're also... At this point, we're going to give Lydia her due. And we're going to get her set up before we move into the next chapter. But to do that, we got to talk to Theron. Hmm? Hello, Theron. Do you remember that armor we saved? Could I have it back, please? There it is. Good. Okay. Good day. Honored to see you again, my Thane. Lydia. I am your sword and your shield. All right, we're going to set her up. We're going to set her up with uh, uh, some armor that is worthy of a tribal warrior, a barbarian warrior. This is kind of Idastog's way basically saying, welcome to the fold, you've proven yourself, you've made your bones, and this is your reward. So we're going to make a few changes in her right now. Firstly, we're going to give her this dark, this is a, a dark plate cuirass. It's similar in some ways um, to Idastog's armor, but Idastog's armor I have fairly heavily customized. This is straight out of the box. So, All right. Let's give her this. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to change out that weapon. We're going to give her this Nordic hammer, which I think is going to be a great fit for her. All right. And... I am doing okay as far as weight goes. Farewell. So that's the beginnings of her setup, but we're we're gonna work a little bit more on her once we get back to White Run. Right. So let's make our journey back. Come, it's time to leave. destroy that. Probably recover some firewood. It's okay. Honor to you, my thing. She needs new gauntlets. She needs a heavy shield to go with that hammer. And eventually, Long life to you. some different boots as well. But she looks good. She looks good. Now the one thing what that I am going to do is we are going to take some of the dragon bones that we've collected out of her inventory and Honor set those aside. Again, the thing. assumption is that those dragon bones have been used to make this adornment for her armor. 
and that is something that he has made for her to attach to her armor as, as kind of again, a trophy. All right. Now, let's gather everyone up here. Okay, now, a quick question for everybody. Um, I, I want to make sure that I... Is the game sound okay in relationship to my voice? And is the background music too loud, too soft, or just right? If you could give me some feedback, this is going to help me make sure I've got it dialed in each time I do this. So, any feedback you care to provide, that's very good. Wind sounds pretty loud. How are the voices compared to the wind, though? Are the voices loud also? Character voices, I mean. Sound effects loud. Okay. Okay. We'll leave the voices at full and we'll turn all this stuff down just a wee bit. Voices are quieter than the wind. Okay. We'll get it dialed in here, eventually. Yeah, well, we would expect the followers to be... I mean, we got to walk up to them to talk to them, right? So... Now, the other thing that I think is significant... is that, um, okay, hang on. I don't want to get into a discussion of anything roleplay related until we sort this audio. I asked the question, so I'll fix it. See, I've got voices maxed out right now. So those are as loud as they're gonna get. Let's leave the thunder a little bit on the louder side. That makes sense to me. <coughs> It's usually, if I'm going to have problems with something, it's wind and rain, drowning everything out. I've got your back. Lead on. All right. So we're headed back to Whiterun. We're going to take a different path, though. We're going to go kind of around uh, the far side of the city there. So one of the things that we encountered, of course, in Labyrinthian was that huge battle. There was a huge battle going on that, that looked like it could have possibly been a battle between a couple of um, rival bandit groups, perhaps? One of the questions that came up on the way there was just... Uh, Eidestag questioning why this particular ruin was so deserted. He he would have expected to find more bandits there. Now the theory is that perhaps some of those bandits were stationed here and had ventured out to fight another group in maybe a territorial dispute or something of that nature.
So one of the things that has happened now is that we've basically been awarded this title of fame in Whiterun. What is this? And that is a responsibility that I think walked or crawled or flown at one time or another. Ita Stog will take fairly seriously. Come, let us set him free. You we cannot set him free. Behind you. Where is that man? We should be able to release him now, yes? Here. Ah, he has got himself free. Excellent. She had a false eye made from a pearl. Did you not see that? Okay. One of the things that we are going to do eventually is... It's, it's pretty clear... Well, at least I think it's clear. Maybe it's not. Um... Ida Stog is not is not what I would call a Stormcloak sympathizer. However, he's definitely no friend of the Imperials. He hates the Imperials, but we get the impression that he's not completely on board with the Stormcloak philosophy. He just fights the, the Imperials out of principle, right? Now, eventually, that's going to catch up with him in terms of notoriety. So the time is going to come, eventually, where um, we get to a certain point in the story. I am going to, between episodes, make a quick run over to Windhelm and here. join the Stormcloaks. Now, I'm not going to be joining the Stormcloaks as part of the Civil War questline. Because I'm not, I'm not interested in having Idastog do the Civil War questline. As you know, Vander is the one doing the Civil War questline. However, what I do want to do is, as a demonstration I a guy who survived of this crew's growing infamy with the Imperials, is I want to make sure that we're set up so that periodically we can, we can take on the aggression of the Imperials. So we'll go and quickly join. We'll do that off camera and kind of sort of pretend that that's not what's actually happening. And that's why we'll do that. Need my archers to concentrate on that base. That all you got? You hit like an old lady. You hit like an old lady. I'll show you a real. Oh, getting hell beat out of me. It's too freaking chaotic in here. 
Alright. These guys are wearing the same armor. We, we're gonna have to take care of this mage ourselves. I can take care of Pinned in the corner. There we go. Threat neutralized. Why won't you die? I think it's quite possible that at this point, Idastog does more damage with his shield than his actual weapon. Come now, take this man. I'll show you what a real lord is going on. Oh, I thought I'd put him down. Finish it. What? Still here. Is this possible? Ah. They stunned? I'm right behind you. What magic is this? Are you well? That was very strange. Now it could be it could be an effect I like good of women wild cat. Me, but if I'm being honest, I prefer cheap women and good me. <laughs> I know it's not AFT. Because I've made some changes to AFT. So the first reaction may be to say that it's that. Amazing follower tweaks behavior is different than what that is. So that's interesting. But we can use that as well. We can use everything. As I look at that, that's interesting because some strange magic or spell right effect behind you. or something. Look at this. Bet that secret fire mage would like it. She'll sell it. What else? We can use that. I'm going to treat it as if he were all almost seeing a vision of what could happen to the people he cares about if he's not careful. So... Some magic took them down, but the side effect is that that's the impact it has on him. He starts to imagine how badly things could go if he's not careful. So, I like that. Come. This place is bad. Come, get out of the way. You know her as hell. Okay. Actions. Get behind me. Uh, you can also make a follower get behind you by drawing your weapon when you are colliding with them. Oh, good to know. All right. Let's do that. Now, somewhere here, one of these guys... 
has the magical axe that does extra damage. against animals. So here it is, the poacher's axe. Let's get that. Yeah, there's a lot to loot in here, but I'm... I'm right behind you. This is a character who has some superstitions, and that whole event has a has the quality of a bad omen to it. So rather than looting everything in here, we're getting the hell out because it makes him nervous. So I think we need to... We need to be true to the character's personality. Omens are one of those things we have to be concerned about. So let's, let's get out. Omens and curses are definitely Empire, not insignificant to this character. Fight for this side so, I think one of the things that is particularly fun about this is... <laughs> this idea of having him be a follower of the old ways. Uh... To a large degree, we get to decide what the old ways are. What are these traditions? What are these things that he does and doesn't do? What are his, you know, his superstitions and his his fears? And what are the strange things he reveres and doesn't? We're going to be paying a lot more attention to that kind of stuff and giving it some thought. And I may document some of this thing, uh, some of this stuff as we go. Come. There is an attack. Support! Fucking... God. There's a lot of these bandits from o OBIS or whatever it is. Um, oh game crash that actually have either either real or phantom skeevers with them which is a crazy pain in the ass All right, we're back. Hang on. Let's let the game catch up with us here. And the skeevers that are with these bandit Still groups here. are not like your typical skeevers, that is for sure. So let's try it again. The other thing, after... After after so much kind of solo adventuring, I sometimes forget... Dragonborn, huh? This is the part where I make a joke about your mom. Listen, brother. I like good women and cheap meat. Shut up. Being honest, I prefer cheap women and good meat. <laughs> I dare you to make another comment about my mother. I dare you. 
Well, look who it is. We will come to blows one day. All right. Brothers from different mothers, you know. Cheap shots galore. So what I, what I was saying is sometimes I forget that when you have followers, if you really want to line them up to actually help you in a fight, you have to do certain things. You have to be aware of how they're following you and how they spread out when the fighting starts and stuff like that. There was I not. Still here. Wait, I know you. I will bring word of your friend's death back to the Yarrow. Heard they're reforming the Dawn Guard. Vampire hunters or something in the old fort near Riften. Might consider joining up myself. Maybe you should do that. I've got your back. Because you're a terrible guard. Still here. Don't suppose you didn't chant my sword. That old blade can barely cut butter. All right. So... Maybe we'll take his sword back. I'm right behind you. Mm hmm. We'll give this to Theral and have her hold on to it for us. You lead, I'll follow. Let's continue. What did I do that reminded you of uh, Marl? Or was it the fact that I said Jarl and that rhymes? That could be. Alright, we're gonna go back to White Run. We are going to sell some stuff. We're gonna report to the Jarl. We'll drop off this sword. Oh, okay. Yeah, sometimes I don't know what you guys are referring to. Um, we're not always in sync all the time, so. You'll have to pardon me. Sometimes you have to elaborate.
right behind you. I've got your back. He's right Still behind here. you. Do you see the axe he is carrying? It is that it is a bit more in design. Right behind you. Still here. Got some kind of problem, son? Can a man just look at the river? Dog, watch over your back. You gonna stare at him like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you travel near the edges of White Room, the rubble of a recently destroyed travel cart can be seen on the edge of the road. It seems to have been stripped clear of any valuable items, but there may have been hidden items that guards and passing travelers may have missed. Search the debris for items. Picking away at the rubble reveals only a few gold coins and items, but of particular interest is a tattered note. It indicates that the cart was being operated by a small band of bandits traveling to a hideout they refer to as Winstead Mine. Accompanying the letter is a small map that highlights its location as being in the marshes of Hjalmark, in between the Nordic tombs of Ustengrav and Highgate Ruins. You. Yeah. Do you know of this location, Ustenbrook? Hmm? Well, of course I do. Well, I'm planning to build a mine. If you would kindly help me clear it out of Nerdy Wells, maybe I can help you. You are the uh, illustrious dragonborn, I heard, right? Yes, I am. That's what they call me. Hmm. What is it to you? And how did you hear that? Oh, I have my sources. Yes? I understand you are looking for Ustengrav. Well, I happen to know exactly where I... that is. I would gladly guide you there. If you will only help me clear out something? those bandits. In fact, I'll sweeten the deal by helping you get through Ustengrav. You need place. something? What do you say? I've got your back. What do you think? He does not look trustworthy. I've got your back. Well, I know Still you have here. my back. Oh, talk to my brother. What do you think of him? Do I trust him or not? Oh, now the cat has your tongue. Well, I'm making an executive decision. I've got your decision. back. Yeah? You will be my guide. Guide us to Ustingra. Mm -hmm. We will help you with your problem. Hey. Let's not waste any time. But we are going to White Run first. Wait. Come, Still everyone, here. let's go. Wait. I know you. Yes, that is because I am famous. There is no other possible reason you could know me. Clearly, this man knows who I am by How sight. How can I help a brother Nord? Who does he know? He is big. And he hangs at the back of the pack. Hmm. Still here. I do not trust him. Sleeping with my hand on my axe. All right. Let's 
we'll see what our options are here. We're going to offload some gear. We're going to uh, transfer or basically transform some of this junk we have into coin. And then we're going to make our way to Ustengrav with the help of our new guide who knows exactly where that location is. If you're familiar with Winstead Mine, that is the mod I used to build the mine that is supposed to be the base camp of Robard Graves, which happens to be right by Ustengrav, so it makes a lot of sense that he would know exactly where that barrow is located. So. Plus, it'll be a lot of fun to have him along, see what kind of scrapes we get into and how he does. Good afternoon. I just started you get to the cloud district gonna keep on. ignoring those guys what, what am I saying of course you don't that's some I don't claim to be the best blacksmith and the finest weapons and armor okay one of the things that I really want is I'm hoping to find a good shield this one could work. I also got this heavy painted shield. I'm going to go with a heavy painted shield because we can customize it and make it our own. All right, let's sell some stuff here. Now these, I've already determined that I can't disenchant these. I have the enchantments already, so we'll get rid of those. Okay. Let's also look at her gauntlets. She's got nothing here I'm interested in. Don't forget to check inside the shop if you need anything. I've got your back. I've got your back. I can smell it. I'm right behind you. Welcome to war, mate. We've got small weapons as well as big. Mason. Hmm. Blades, helmets, pretty much anything to suit your needs. Okay. Nope. Everybody's got Imperial gauntlets. I don't want Imperial gauntlets. We good doing good business barbarian with you. Looking. I'm right behind see you. See that? There's a transaction being made. Now suddenly he's You look like maybe you need a new weapon. Something big, perhaps? Still An here. Axe, maybe. Or a great sword. Did you say great sword or a great sword? Which is it? All right. She's got some extra stuff we can take. We're not going to use that anymore. The hunting bow, we're going to keep that on her until we can find something better. This trident blade, she doesn't really need that either. Let's get going then. Most of our weapons were crafted by eight. Looking to protect yourself or deal some damage?
still here. All right, we'll try in here too. Let me know if you see anything you like. What are you doing that for? Oh, settle down. Ah, hello, my Nord friend. In the market for some hunting supplies? What are you hunting? Never mind. I don't want to know. I like Lydia's pirouette in the foreground. That was nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Witch plate gauntlets? Uh, no. However, we could get Lydia a better bow. Nordic Scrimshaw bow doesn't do enough damage. Imperial bow, never. Cyrodiilic, nah. There was a cast off um, Forsworn bow. We probably should have kept. But I can't see her using a Dwarven bow. And these bows all do very little damage. What does she got now? A hunting bow? A hunting bow is six. A scrimshaw bow would be nine. I mean, it's more, but... Ah. We'll see what we find. Thank you very much for your business. That's more interesting. I like good women and cheap That's more meat, interesting. But if I'm being honest, I prefer cheap meat. I'm right behind you. I've got your back. Well met, kinsman. Fresh baked loaves. Still warm from the oven. Tired of bread and stew? <laughs> Come on in. Just stoke the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. If I have a lot of companions, it's primarily for storytelling purposes. Normally, I adventure solo. This is really the only character I have who has many companions at all. So it's really about role play. It's less about challenge, and it's more about There's role a play. Here in Maybe the challenge here is a role play time. challenge and not a game. You know what I'm saying? If what you're doing is telling a story in your head, then you can get a lot of mileage out of all kinds of different NPCs. So I'm not overly concerned with that. Robard is a Nord, yes. My poor Frally, I think Thorun's still alive, but I know better. God be praised. That is a flagon half empty thought, sir. So we got this new shield. There. That is a paint job. Right. So we get the heavy spiked shield, we're going to give Lydia the heavy shield, but they'll have the same emblem on them, which will be... I like it because it's got... it doesn't look like heraldry, it definitely looks like something tribal, and does look... remind me of something that is maybe an arcane symbol, or a rune, or something that would be meaningful to a tribal shaman type of person. So we're going to work on giving it our own meaning. Wait, I know you. <laughs> Don't 
Don't suppose you'd enchant my sword. Donald Blade can barely cut butter. All right, let's see if we can enchant, disenchant this stuff we've got. What? Is that what the poacher's axe actually looks like? It is. Holy shit. Okay. Interesting. Well, I'm not going to disenchant that then. Because it's so distinctive. I like it. Where is this fool of a mage? Come to me. It seems this damnable conflict is claimed. Spells and incantations for those with the talent to guess. All right. I can sell this. We also have this spell tome we can sell to him. And we're going to sell it at a loss. It's fine with me. Not going to sell him this, though. I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I don't think he has anything that we could use at this point. You know, if you've got the aptitude... You should join the Mage's College right. in Winter. I think that's pretty good. So we're going to get some rest. Yes. And we're going to head out to Ustengrab in the morning. Okay, so that poacher's axe is quite unique. Maybe... Patron of the Great Clan Battleborn. Maybe we'll treat it as if it were some kind of a relic, because it's definitely... I'm pretty sure the customizations to that item are specific to Winter Sun and having to do with the old ways, following the old ways. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Well, hang on, it seems unique enough that we wouldn't disenchant and destroy it. We've got warm food, warm drinks, and warm beds. Need something? What do you need, my friend? Honor to you, my Thane. All right. So, let's give her her new shield. This is a light shield. We're going to take that back from her. Um, and then we've got this heavy painted round shield. She's going to get that. We're also going to give her this woodcutter's axe. We're going to give her this tent and bedroll, cooking pot, torch, and water skin. Eventually, when she starts using that backpack, these items will get filled out in her backpack. Um, All right, then. You know, makes sense that she would be carrying there. that, I think. I know her as Ellie Sif, the dirty little chambermaid. Nobody knows how much. Huh? My father liked that, John. If it's work you need, I enjoy this work well enough, but I'm ready to retire. Sure thing, it's yours for a day. I'll show you to your room, right this way. Well, if it's Matt work you're looking for, you, woman, Hilda's the one to talk to. You are the one Wanna who hear beat a me up Lord last wisdom? Book, yes. You don't really know a woman until you had a strong drink and a fist fight with her. Yes, you keep saying that. I am not going to apologize for hitting you when I congratulate Keep you walking, on knocking guy. me out. I'm more woman than you can have. Oh, soft gut. I like that. I bet all the guys like that, don't they? I got no quarrel with you, but I won't turn one down, neither.
Come on, get on with it. All right. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Okay. Sadia, wake up. Some mead. Some elk steak. Some cheese. Water. Here. Yes, Mama. Okay. I'm gonna do 12 hours just so we can get back to like a fairly normal sleep schedule. We got all out of whack there for a while. So we're gonna correct that issue. Okay, now, in the coming day, we are gonna focus on blocking and this time around, I'm going to focus on heavy armor as well. Heavy armor is one of those that can kind of move up slowly. So we're going to use our 20% bonus to This is an ode to Skyrim's that staunch protector. Okay. You want a drink? No. Would like to refill my water of course. skins, please. Of course. Age of aggression. Listen to me. <laughs> I said please. No more questions. Wasn't very barbaric, was it? With our blood and our steel, we will take back our home. Brother, you smell. Down with you should wash that cloak. The killer of kings on the day all right. of your death. Let's get ready for travel, first of all. Drink and we'll we'll gather see. up our followers. And then we are going to hotkey unrelenting force in case we get into a scrap. We're the children of Skyrim and we fight all our lives. Are coming or not? guard beckons every one of us. Still here. Wait. I spend a lot of time with I know. I am a city barbarian. This is true. You, Ranger, I trust you will give me directions as we go. Get lost. Hmm. Good night, William. Thanks for stopping in. Yes. See you next time, hopefully. Maybe. All right, so we got two tasks to achieve here. One is to get through Ustingrav, and we're going to try to find that horn of Jurgen Windcaller at got the request a that some be killing somewhere. of the Greybeards. And then we're also going to do a favor for this Robard Graves guy, who has asked us to help him out with a group of bandits that are in Winstead Mine, which is right next door to Ustingrav, coincidentally. So he is going to show us how next to get to Ustingrav, and in exchange, we're going to help him with that problem. Now, of course, we've got to travel there, which is going to take us once again up through Labyrinthian, but this time we're going to keep going. Okay. Where are the cats? What's happened to them? Here we go. We're headed for that pass right ahead. That notch in the mountains is where we're going. That is where... the ruins are. Now, because we got basically most of the way through the ruins last time around, there aren't going to be any threats in there, probably. And 
we also cleared out this ruin on our way through the last time. So we're probably not going to see any threats there as well. Now one of the things I do need to do, though, is I do need to do my morning meditation. So, let's start the day. Now one of the first tenets I think I'm going to put together for this religion, worshipping the old ways, because it's animal-focused. Okay. Um... not going to do our meditation inside city limits. Okay. Now I can make a sacrifice to the animal gods. To do this, I can spend uh, it, 100, 100 septums or more, sacrificing 100 septum or more gem, and then I can take on the aspect of a particular revered animal. Um, I've already taken on the aspect of the eagle, and I'm going to stick with that for now, so I would do this again if I were going to change it. The world of animals is harsh. Before my very eyes do they consume a fox. Just show him a scimitar. He'll go on for days about a curved sword. Alright, so we're going to make our way to Ustengrav. Once we get there, we're going to take a short break. While I get up out of my chair and I retrieve a beer. And then we're going to come back and we're going to be doing a couple of dungeon crawls. One through a mine and then one through the barrow. So from a roleplay perspective, there's a number of different things we're monitoring all at the same time. These are just little things that I have stuck in the back of my head that I'm thinking about. One of those is, at what point does his beef with the Imperials become so great that the Imperials start to recognize him as a threat? Now, right now, there's probably some rumblings across Skyrim that there is someone calling himself the Dragonborn and that the Greybeards have called this person. But we're not at a stage yet where people would recognize Itastog as that person. He's also gotten in some skirmishes with Imperials, but he hasn't declared for the Stormcloaks either. So all, all the Imperials really know at this point is that there have been some bands of Imperial soldiers and patrols that have lost battles and um, have encountered problems at the hands of what appeared to be some kind of rogue mercenary group of barbarian Nord types, right? But there's really not enough that's happened to this point that they could say, they could pin it on Eidastag and his group. But eventually the time's going to come when that'll happen. So what I'm thinking about constantly is what are the encounters we're having with Imperials and what happens during those encounters. Because Eidastag is not really a Stormcloak sympathizer, I've got he your just back. hates the Imperials, it's going to be, the experience is going to be a little bit different. It is dangerous to wander through here on your own. It was a pitch battle last time we were here. Need something? Catch up with your charge. What good is a bodyguard this far behind? Dragon, uh, is this the part where I make a joke about your mom? Sooner or later, Eidastog's going to go after his brother if those comments keep going. That'll be fun. Yes, we, we could pin that. We could pin that to a specific experience. Um, in fact, that's not a bad idea. One of the things I've actually been thinking about with this character is that particular 
part of the quest. Because, honestly, I mean, let's, let's look at this guy. How the hell is he supposed to disguise himself and walk into a party hosted by the Thalmor? I mean, it seems impossible, right? So one of the things I've been thinking about is how to handle that specifically. I've got some ideas, and I'll probably uh, throw a few surprises on you with that whole thing. But let's be honest. Even if Idastog put his hair down and put on fancy clothes, he's still got the runes on his skin and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's going to make it pretty difficult. So we're going to have to get clever about that one. But uh, that's not coming up for a while yet. So we've got some time to figure that out. I'm sure I'll come up with something. I always do. I'll make it interesting. Mr. Graves. Does it not make sense for us to go to Morthal from here? I don't think so. Still here. I have relations there I'd care not to see. So, we are gonna go overland and skip all that bullshit. Alright. a giant nearby. Oh, there he is. Alright, we're just going to skip the road altogether. Now those of you who are familiar with Robart Graves know that he is the illegitimate son of the Jarl of Morthal, and he does not get along with his mother at all. So he's definitely not going to go back that way. So one of the options, um, the idea of a makeup artist actually isn't that far off. It would be possible for Ida Stog to go to the face sculptor and get his appearance changed. Another thing that we could do is we could approach that task by finding a trusted companion to go in our place. Whether or not that makes sense depends on Idastog and how he's how he's feeling about entrusting any aspects of his sort of I guess personal quest of discovery to someone else. But that would be a possibility. And uh, if, if I did go that route, I've got ways of making that happen. Oh, this fog. This fog will render my archers ineffective. Ranger, are we close? We must be, yes? 
Yeah, it's around here somewhere. Keep looking. Hey, look, a cave. Wonder what's inside. What do you think? Judging by the blood and skulls, something bad, I presume. You! You in the chat! Be quiet! This is a critical mission. Shh! You must be quiet, as quiet as a sneaking barbarian. <laughs> yes. Like my brother Volfar, who can't be quiet at anything. I can be sneaky at times, anyway. How deep is this? disconcerting. Your sense of direction will fail you very quickly. Wait. This way. Look it. Very good, Ranger. I see a barrow on the horizon. This must be it, yes? How do you suggest we attack? Well... I recommend attacking from all directions, preferably with weapons. Ugh. You are no help. Wars are not won with snark. Kill that thing! Here lies Ustengrav. Well, I suppose I must keep my end of the bargain now. As a show of my good faith. Let us take care of your bandit problem, what do you say? That sounds fine to me. It's just over them rocks there. Just you can go up around to the right, what do you say? There should be a small fortification. <laughs> True to his word so far. Are you sure you have a bandit problem? It seems deserted.
Let us do this. All right, what we're going to do is tweak commands. We are going to bring everyone to stop. Okay. Except for Mr. Graves here. We're going. We're going to bring him in. Lead the way. Very good. Okay. So we'll just make this a two-person job. Now this space um, is the mine that will eventually become Winstead Mine, which is the mine, of course, that Robard Graves has been the foreman of in some of my other stories. I don't know what kind of crazy what time that? warp that puts us in in terms of timeline, but at this point... <laughs> This whole concept is held together by a thread anyway, so... Are you ready? Here he comes. Ah, it's an archer. Huh? Well done. Teamwork. Yes, you're correct. It is almost monochrome. I've adjusted the saturation quite a bit on Eidestog's story because his story is supposed to be grim compared to the others. So things are pretty desaturated. Some of my other stories with other characters are very, very vibrant looking. Not this one. Let's get going. Okay, we're going to make an adjustment to our tweak option settings so that um, in combat he will stay a little bit closer when Let's we're inside go. here. Hopefully he will. We'll see. Voicing two characters. I could get into it though, I think. A little practice. Time to end this little game. Whoa. 
That's all you I will take his gold. You can have the rest. That seems like fair payment, does it not? Is this a dead end? I think we have accomplished our task, Ranger. It is done. Now, on to Ustengrav, you say. Hmm? Huh? Water! into you. Come. Alright, so that task is done. Well, here's a Nordic Scrimshaw bow. Let's confiscate that along with some orcish arrows and we'll outfit Lydia with an upgraded bow. Uh, yeah, Vander has actually made some cameo appearances in, in other character stories before. Most of the characters that I have played in stories, I also have a mod for, allowing me to run them as NPCs. I don't think that Vander's is in working order, but most of the other characters actually are, which is kind of interesting. Ladies? Ladies? Oh, you know her as Ellie Sif the Fair. Okay. I know. So, let us do this. Tweet commands. Or is Ellie Sif the dirty little We're gonna bring everybody with us next door to Ustengrav. Made. Still here. Still here. I've got your back. Okay. Tweak options. Gear. Standard. Take the hunting bow, and we are going to drop in the Nordic scrimshaw bow and these orcish arrows, just because they're better than what she had. Let's get going then. All right. So in Ustengrav, we're not going to take any but everybody in here either. Doesn't make sense. The crew is just too big for that. Uh, we have to take Robard because he's paying us back. And then... As to whom else he would take, I think that is going to be driven somewhat by who he feels is most deserving. He's been at odds with his brother lately, so I think he's going to leave Hoth, and he's going to leave Lydia outside to cover the flank, and he's going to take these two in right here. All right. So what we're going to do, again, stop. And then we'll go to the individuals we want. We're going? Lead the way.
We heading out? Let's get going. Now with this particular group, uh, I mean, they're both good fighters, but primarily excellent archers and light armor characters, so it's actually going to be, in this case, Eidestog, who will end up being the tank in this situation, I guess. Now, before we go too much farther, let's make sure we hotkey Relenting Force, because that is actually a key part of the fighting style I'm adopting for this character. was a tight little battle, friends. I liked it. Necromancer down. Alright. This is a good spot for us to pause, my friends. So we are going to pause right here, and I will be back in about five minutes, all right? Talk amongst yourselves. All right, we're back. We are definitely going to get some things going on psychologically with this character throughout this story, but those are going to be, uh, you know, things that I add by way of roleplay, obviously. Um, I think that uh, one thing to mention here is that this is a character who has lived a life steeped in mysticism. Um, worship of ancient gods, study of runes and oral tradition. He's seen some very strange things, as well as his deep and abiding obsession with the Woodland Man. And the Woodland Man is a, a horrifying figment. I think it's going to take a lot, in, a, in other words, I think what I'm saying is it's going to take a lot to sort of break this character psychologically and emotionally. He spent his life hardening himself around the concept that he is the last remaining survivor holding on to this stuff. I mean, he sees himself as the warrior guardian of the traditions of, and history of his people. So I think of him as being pretty iron-willed and pretty, I think, stable psychologically. Now, there are certain things that he may have sort of an irrational fear of around superstitions, but whether or not they'll make him crack and suffer any ill effects, I don't know. Now, eventually, the time is going to come when he's probably going to be faced with the very real possibility of an encounter with the Woodland Man himself. And now when that happens, I have no idea what's going to happen to him. Uh, because that is really essentially the great boogeyman in his life. So we'll see. We're going to take it as it comes. All right. The wind is here. Finally. Good to see the wind. All 
right. Let's get to it. Search them later. Come. Ah. There are old ones ahead. Oh, look at this. <sighs> ha! Good time. Good timed block. Thank you, sir. Yes, Robart as an NPC is pretty much a chain smoker. He never stops. <laughs> Bypassed a chamber back here, so we're going to go check it out. One of the things we do understand is that Theral is recording his story. Um, that's kind of spelled out in the first couple episodes. We know that Theral is kind of recording his story. What he's concerned about is finding a scribe or someone who can help him take the knowledge trapped inside of his head and record it for posterity. Now, I don't think that's going to be Theral. We don't know who that's going to be. Part of the reason that he was willing to go up and talk to the Greybeards is because he thought there was a possibility that they might be able to help him with this task, but we know clearly now that they can't. And so he's really still on a quest to solve this problem. So no, there hasn't been any real discussion about it, per se. So I'm just kind of waiting to see where the adventure leads. And, you know, possibly the adventure will lead us down a path where that a solution to that problem will present itself. It may not be quite literally a scribe. It could be some other circumstance that allows him to escape the predicament that he's in at the moment. So we're just waiting to see how it shakes out. That's one of the things I love about this game. Get to know your character really well. Put together a good, solid character, the beginnings of a story and a psychological po profile that you can understand. And then let Skyrim tell you the story. So that is what we're doing. change it up a bit here. And we 
we're gonna let the big dog eat. We're gonna work on the two-handed skill. I'm going to start sinking a lot more into health. All right, I'm going to be focusing on health for a little while. Now, coming over here, I think what I'm going to do is invest in block this time around. After a successful timed block, bashing the attacker within five seconds deals double damage. Handled. Thank you. Less. I had it handled, though. Look at this. Is it a feasting hall? I wonder, do the old ones still feast? Now it's worth pointing out that the Dragon Priests of Skyrim he has described in the past as the Betrayers. The Dragon Priests who came south from Admora and became corrupted. He refers to them as the Betrayers, which implies that the Dragon Priests of Admora were not the Betrayers or held in higher regard. So he is not a person who's opposed to dragon priests. He is a person who believes certain factions of dragon priests turned on their people. So there's a difference there, I think. Armor increase, I like it. Come so simple. Got you to back. disenchant. So from the start, I had kind of liked the idea of turning this character into more of a versatile warrior. 
but for the sake of survival, we've been pretty much focused on one-handed up to this point. So this seems like a good opportunity to try our hand at some two-handed combat. So, let's do that. Look. There is a dragon wall. Uh, we must get down there. Come. Uh. All right, let's switch over to Whirlwind Sprint. Some cover. Okay, now they're taking. Now they're taking aim on him. Where are they? I can hear them taking out skeletons, but I don't know where they're shooting from. See if we can rejoin our companions. Woo. Ah, come, we gotta get them where they live. Potions, we're taking potions, we're taking scrolls, because he simply sees them for their resale value, pretty much. So, that is why we loot those. I must see this wall. I don't understand how, but I can. Ah, come on. Sorry, I nearly cut you in half, Mr. Graves. All 
All right, let's search the rest of this cavern. I think we can safely move on from here. So let's move to the next stage. Welcome to the stream, Akana. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just glancing over there and saying things. Spiders, everyone, spiders.
he's that's impressive. 